Hey up, Rock God 2004 back with another video for you. Um, this one is a what I've watched this last week and an unboxing of something I've had in the post. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's three things that, that have arrived. I, I honestly haven't got a clue with it. I think I know what one of them is off the top of my head. But before I get to that, I'll show you what I've watched um, this this past week. Um, and the first one I watched, and I had to watch this in three parts because I just kept falling asleep. I was that tight. It was late. It was nothing to do with the film. I thought I'd seen an hour of it. And then when I put it back on, I'd actually seen about an hour and a quarter. I'd only fell asleep for 15 minutes. So I took it back to about half an hour. So I knew where I was up to. And I watched it till the end. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. It was totally different to what I was expecting. It was actually better than I expected. Um... And the ending, wow. Um, so this is the, the new uh, Second Sight films release of George A. Romero's Martin. Um, the ending, I did not see that coming. It totally ended completely different to how I expected. Um, I did an unboxing of this if you want to go and have a watch of the video. But th this is an absolutely beautiful set. Uh, I'm so glad I got it. I haven't watched the Blu-ray. I only watched the 4K. Now, the 4K is very grainy because it was shot on 16mm. That being said, it is the best it's going to look. I mean, they have put a lot of work into this. It can't really look any better. I don't know if when you put the Blu-ray on, it'll be a little bit better than the 4K due to the fact that maybe the grain will reduce a bit. But even though it's grainy, the colours on it are really, really nice. And the sharpness is there. So it, it does what a 4K should do. Um, there's no awkwardly dark scenes or anything like that. Um, and I notice as well the, the, the blacks, because it's, it's not like true full screen. But when, when the blacks come on the screen, you can see like they just totally blend in with the borders. You can't see the lines. So it's really, really good the way they've done it. Um, it's basically the story about this this young lad, Martin, played by, um, what do you call the actor again? I can never remember this guy's name. Uh, John, John Amplis. Um, I've seen John Amplis in a couple of other films as well. I didn't know, but apparently he's in uh, Dawn and Day of the Dead. I might remember him in Dawn Vega, but I didn't know he was in Day of the Dead. I've seen him in a, a John Russo film called Midnight, which is a fantastic horror film with a difference again. Um, it's kind of, I think it was filmed in the same area, Pittsburgh, and that's a, it's very similar. Uh, and I got it from, I think it was Severin did his, and it's a, it's a great film. Well, John Amplis is a, a policeman in that. Mm. Um, whereas in this, he plays this young guy, Martin who um he says he's 80 odd years old um and people don't believe him obviously he's very young and he has to drink people's blood however this is not your conventional vampire film he doesn't grow fangs and go around biting people's necks it's totally different to any other vampire I've ever seen. Uh, vampire film, sorry. Um, if you've not seen this, don't expect this major expensive blockbuster. Very low budget. It was before Dawn of the Dead, but it was after Night of the Living Dead, so it, it wasn't exactly flush at this point. But it was it was written by him, and it was directed by him, George Romero. Um, what a film. Something different. It is an 18. It's quite gory in parts. Um, and I know the blood is very similar to the blood in Dawn of the Dead, except the Dawn of the Dead blood was a little bit more orange. This is more red, but you can see. But even so, to me, that doesn't take anything away from it. I just had a an absolute blast with this. Uh, I did watch one of the, the features where it shows you John Amplis and two of the guys from the crew. Going around some of the locations as they are now. Talking about the film and the shooting of the film and like what the places look like now and what it looked like then. Uh, and it was it was 
actually really nice to watch them all together again. You can see they were like, wow, can't believe this is here and stuff like that. That's the only one I've watched. I don't know if there's any other special features. It looks like there's quite a lot that I need to get through. And I'm assuming some of them are on the Blu-ray as well. Um, the only thing missing from this is that long two and a half hour black and white cut, which they couldn't get. Had it not been for that, this would have been the ultimate edition. And to date, it is. If you've not seen it, try and watch it first just in case you don't like it. Don't be spending like 40 quid on it if you're unsure. I did because it's a film I've wanted to see for years. I got lucky. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but if you like it, if you've watched it, you like it, or you have seen it and you're debating whether to get this, I would get it before it disappears because I think this is going to go pretty much the same way as Dawn of the Dead did. It'll sell out. There's a lot of people being waiting for this. So, yeah. I would recommend it, but just in case, watch it first. But it is a vampire film with a real difference. That's George A. Romero's Martin. Next one I got, I've only ever seen this once. And it was like donkey's years ago, 89, 90, whenever it came out. And I've only ever seen it the once, but I know I loved it. And I thought, I've gotten to buy it a few times over the years, DVD, Blu-ray. And I've always stopped. And then I seen this a couple of weeks back and it was like in the two for 24. So it was like 12 quid. And it had the slip. I'm having it. Who framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> what a blast I had with this. Oh, God, my, it is, it is so much more enjoyable than I even remembered. Um, I could not remember the fact that you get, like, Daffy Duck and Donald Duck together. And you get Bugs Bunny in there. And you get Mickey Mouse in there. It's it's amazing. Um, Christopher Lloyd is fantastic in this. I'm not a massive, uh, I don't dislike him, but I'm not a massive Bob Hoskins fan. I love him in this. He's really, really good in this. And then when he does the little dance sequence towards the end, I was absolutely... <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, most of you have probably, you know, seen this a million times over. But for me, it was only a second watch. Um, and you do get the Blu-ray... And the 4K. And they're two very, very nice picture discs as well. Uh, but the picture on the, the 4K, wow, excellent. I also spotted as well, I won't say the character in case you haven't seen it, but somebody like in cartoon fashion flies across the room. I can't remember whether they being hit or what. And I saw the strings. Now, I don't know whether that was because of how clear the 4K was or what, but I'd never noticed it when I first watched it. Uh, I didn't know who did the voice of Jessica Rabbit, and I was gobsmacked when I found out it was that, what do you call her? Kathleen Turner, is it? Can't remember now. Um, and I had no idea it was that Charles, is it Fleischer? Fleischer, who did Roger Rabbit. I remember him in Zodiac and the original Nightmare on Elm Street, so that blew my mind. But what a cracking film that is. It's so entertaining. I'm sure you've seen it, but if you haven't, I would definitely recommend Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The next one I watched was the other one of the Roger Rabbit 2 for £24. And this was 12 quid with the slip. I do have this on Blu-ray with no slip. And I'm pretty sure I remember the Blu-ray not being as clear and sharp as what I thought it was going to be. So to be honest, I wasn't expecting this to be all that. But I thought, I love the film. I saw it the same when it first came out. So I thought, I'm going to have it. Um, and it's Keanu Reeves in Speed with the Slip. I put this on and oh my God, the picture quality is fantastic. Well impressed. I thought it was going to be grainy. It really isn't. It's, wow. It's fantastic. And the colours, everything about it. This is such a blast. If you haven't seen this, my God, what a film. Uh, Dennis Hopper, what an annoying evil prick. Keanu Reeves is his usual lovable self. Uh, Sandra Bullock, or Sandra Bullock, oh, I keep calling her Sandra, it's Sandra Locke. Sandra Bullock um, is actually really pretty in this film, and she plays this. Amazing. I don't rate her that much, but in this, good God. Um, you know what the storyline is by now with this but just in case you don't um there's this nutter 
going around bombing. Um, there's the Blu-ray, and there's the 4K. It's nice when you get both. So Keanu Reeves is this. Um, he's not exactly a policeman. He's like a sort of a, a special agenty type of thing. You know where they're going. I can't remember what they're called. Like the SWAT team. It's, it's that kind of thing. Um, and this guy, he's he's um, played by Dennis Hopper. He, he's setting these bombs for, to go off and stuff. Um, and Keanu Reeves and Jeff Daniels, is it the call it? My memory man alive. It's got to be him. Is it Jeff Daniels? Why am I talking to myself? Am I going to pause this and edit it out? No. I'm going to say it to him, you know, him out of Dumb and Dumber. I'm sure it's Jeff Daniels. He's like his partner. So they, they stopped this bomb from going off. Well, our Mr. Hopper is happy about this. So he plants a bomb on a bus. And if the bus goes over 50 miles an hour, it detonates the bomb. It like activates it. It doesn't blow it up, it activates it. And then after that, if he goes below 50, it's going to blow up. I swear to God, it is so tense, this. It's one of the greatest action films I've ever seen. And I don't watch loads and loads of them, but the, what a film this is. If you've seen it, you're going to know the story. If you haven't seen it and you know nothing about it, my God, do I recommend this. What a film this is. Uh, directed by somebody, De Bont, is it? Yeah, Jan De, Jan De, Jan De Bont. Jan, Jan, Jan De Bont. I'm a rap artist. So, yes. If you haven't seen it, oh my God, go and watch it. Jan de Bon's Speed. The next one I watched was an indicator title. Um, and I was really looking forward to seeing this. Um, it's a film called Torture Garden. Uh, it's an amicus film, which are the ones which are like Hammer. And it's an anthology. I thought, right, I want it. Anthology. Um, it's only Certificate 12. But this one, I'm sure it had a great cast in it. Jack Palance. Burgess Meredith, um, Peter Cushing, directed by Freddie Francis. Uh, I think if I remember rightly, it was the three or four stories, I can't remember. Picture this with Burgess Meredith's fizz are gone. It was good. It wasn't brilliant. I was very disappointed because of the standard of all the other ones that I've seen. Um, so to date, I'm going to say that this is the worst horror anthology I've seen. It was a bit poor compared to the likes of From Beyond the Grave uh, and Tales from the Crypt. Uh, and even all the other ones, like uh, the, mo the more modern ones from that came out after like, Creepshow, uh, Tales from the Crypt has, is nowhere near as good as them. This is quite poor compared to them. Don't get me wrong, it's an enjoyable film. It's a decent watch. I will watch it again in the future. Not yet. Um, it was 1967. But I've seen films 66 better than this. Uh, look at the original Dracula. That was 58. That is a fantastic film. So the age has nothing to do with it really. It could have been so much better. Um, if you fancy seeing it. I would get it while the indicator sale is on. Where you can get it for a fiver. I wouldn't pay any more than that for it. But there you go. Torture Garden. The next one I watched was another one that hammers with the slip cover, and I wasn't expecting much from this. However, wow, what a film. Loved it. Really enjoyed it. And this is Christopher Lee in The Devil Rides Out. I'd never seen this before. Um, and I assumed, as always, that Christopher Lee was the bad guy, and that beard as well made him look like it. Uh, quite the opposite. He's actually the hero in it. Um, I do remember uh, uh, seeing the clip of this, and it's that there. If you are an Iron Maiden fan, as my good self is, you'll recognise that. Because that, a, f a clip of the actual film, is in the video for The Number of the Beast. It's where it's sat looking round, and uh, you see it look like that, and it blows up in a puff of smoke. That's actually taken from this film, so they've obviously had to get, get the rights to do it. Um, I thought it was going to be all, like, 
Satanist all the way through, but it's actually a really, really good story. Um, as with all of these Studio Canal ones as well, you get the two discs, you get the Blu-ray and you get the DVD. I love these sets. I'm well into these Hammer films at the minute, but these Studio Canal ones are just something else. I just love them. You get the slip covers and everything. Um, and the two discs are just so well put together. But uh, a very young Patrick Moore as well. I was never over fussed on him. But he's actually pretty good in this. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend that one. That's The Devil Rides Out. The next one I watched was another Hammer film. And I had very, very low expectations about this. Because um, I've heard mixed reviews about it. I've heard people say it wasn't that great. Uh, and I've heard other people say, oh no, I really liked it and stuff. Anyway, I watched it. And I didn't expect to, but I absolutely loved it. Loved it. I think, with the exception of things like the, the Dracula stuff um, and the other vampire things like that, um, I think this is actually probably one of my favourite Hammer films now. Because uh, I'd never seen it before. It's just so different. It's amazing. Uh, and it's The Witches. I love the way it's set. They've cleaned this up so well. Like, there's not much grain at all. It's sharp. The colours are fantastic. Yet, it looks like you could just jump into the telly. Straight into the early to mid-60s. It's amazing. And I'm looking at how good it is. And I'm looking thinking, you know what? This looks like it was like filmed a couple of years ago. But this film was made before I was even born. This was made in 19... Was it 66? Yeah. 66. I wasn't born until 68. And it looks fantastic. It's, it's not what you think. Because I saw this. And again, I thought it was, this is going to be voodoo all the way through. That gets on my wick. I find films where it's like all voodoo to be quite boring. And that's exactly what I thought of this. But I thought, no, I need to watch it. It's a Hammer film and I want as many as I can of them. And I got it really cheap as well. I think I only paid about eight quid for it, which I was over the moon with, with the slip. It's basically, um, there is like a bit of sort of voodoo in it at the beginning. But the rest of it, it's like... This, this uh, John Fontaine character, she gets a new job in this like remote, beautiful little village, and she's the new headmistress at the school. And you just—I don't know what it is. You just know it's—it's it's a weird little place. There's something not quite right. Tiny, tiny, tiny little hint of the Wicker Man. The village scenes in that, you know. Um, I just loved it absolutely loved it and for saying it was only a, a 12 as well this blew me away I absolutely loved it I can't recommend this one enough um, if you get the chance to see this honestly watch it don't let the titles put you off or the little bit of voodoo because that all changes so yeah that's uh, the Hammer Films film The Witches this one I only got it last week and um, this one was a, a present off the missus. She got me two Hammer films. Um, I've only watched this one. The other one I haven't watched yet. Um, I fancied this because of the cover and because of who was in it. Um, and this was a fantastic film. Um, I don't know whether it was what I was expecting or whether it was different. And I don't know whether I liked it as much as I expected or more. It certainly wasn't less. Bit of a twist as well, but wow, what a film. I'd never seen it before, and it, it's Peter Cushing in Fear in the Night with Judy Jason as well. Uh, it's also got Ralph Bates in, who played um, Dr. Jekyll in Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. He was also in the comedy series in the 80s called Dear John. He always just seems like a very nice bloke. Um, John Collins is in it. Um, I don't really want to say too much without giving this away. I I went in watching this, um, 
blind. I knew nothing about it. It's basically, I know Ralph Bates is married to Judy Jason in it, and he gets this job in this school. Um, where Peter Cushion is the headmaster. So he ends up picking up Judy Jason, and she goes with him to move in and live there and work there and stuff. And that's when things start to get a little bit strange, and I'll leave it at that. Something does happen to Judy Jason before she goes and lives with him. And I think that's what makes her think, right, that's it, I'm not staying on my own. And off she goes. And that's all I'll say. Watch it. What a cracking film. Um, and like all the others, again, you get the two discs. The nice slip. Uh, yeah, can't recommend that one enough. Fear in the Night. The next one was another Hammer film. And I'm not sure where this is actually out of print or not, but I did get this one off eBay. And it was sealed. However, I didn't realise that the covers turned up all cracked and stuff. But that can be replaced. Um, and this will explain why I haven't watched the other one that my wife got me from HMV. This has got Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion in. And this is the original Hammer version of The Mummy. I've always found The Mummy films quite... Ugh, slow. They are my least favourite out of all the the Hammer and Universal monsters. Um, I always used to watch the Boris Karloff ones when I was a kid, and even though I did like them, they were always too slow, I thought. And this one was the same. Now, I need to watch it again, because I'll be honest, I was on my phone at the same time. But as soon as I hear the mummy, I go, ugh. I haven't even bothered with any of the modern ones. No, thank you. But the other one that my wife got me was another mummy, uh, another mummy film, and I don't know what order they're going. I've got three of them, and the only reason I've watched this one is because I know it's the first. Uh, the one she got me was the Mummy's Shroud, and I do have another one. I can't remember what the hell it's called or where I've put it. But like I said. The Mummy are my least favourite out of, like, The Mummy, The Wolfman, Dracula and Frankenstein and The Creature of the Black Lagoon. Um, and I absolutely love the old Universal version of The Invisible Man. Oh, wow, I love that film so much. The Mummy, I can take or leave, but I'm going to persevere with them because they are Universal and Hammer. Um, I, will, I know I'm going to like them to some extent, it's just I know they're going to be slow. But I need to watch this again because I, I really can't remember much about it because I wasn't really taking that much notice. I think my main thing to begin with with this though was to make sure that it played all right so I didn't have to send it back or anything. Um, a lot of people are going to be screaming at this saying, oh, well, I love the mummy. Well, you're going to because other people like different stuff. Um, I'm not saying it's a pile of garbage. Far from it. I mean, you can't say that an early Hammer film with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee's garbage because for me... I can really pretty much do no wrong. Um, it is only 12, and it goes on for 85 minutes. I'll be honest, it felt longer than that. But, slap on my wrist, I wasn't paying attention the full way through, so that will be getting another rewatch. It did play, so I know it's all right. And also, um, a bit like uh, the original Frankenstein film, which was on this label, Icon uh, and have the hammer there with the three discs and that on. You do get a bonus film uh, on DVD disc one. Um, it's like the main feature restored, um, and you get the alternate full frame cut as well as that's what's on the Blu ray. On DVD disc two, it's special features, but one of the special features is. Um, a 1952 Hammer feature film called Stolen Face. Now, I've never heard of that. Now, 1952, that's early. That's got to be black and white. And that's as well as like stuff like Unwrapping the Mummy, the making of a Hammer classic, new documentary. The Hammer Rep Company, new documentary. The House of Horror, Memories of Bray, new documentary. So there's a lot of... And that's only half... I'm only halfway through there. The Stills Gallery, The World of Hammer... 
uh, starring Peter Cushion promo reel, stolen face film, uh, and a PDF because I was looking for a booklet in the um, Frankenstein one. It says all new booklet, Terror from the Tomb, Hammer's Mummy Begins, written by Robert J. Simpson. It then says in brackets, PDF, DVD only. So it's not a physical booklet. It's just on the disc itself. So when you open it, there's nothing there. You just get the three discs. So you get the Blu-ray, DVD disc one, and DVD disc two. So yeah, I will be watching that again in the future. But uh, I can't not recommend or recommend it at the minute. But like I say, I'm not massive, massively into the mummy films but anyway that's the original hammer one the mummy the next film i watched uh this is a second watch of this and i got this oh god it must be over a year ago i got it from vinegar syndrome direct of their website um i'm gonna do a vinegar syndrome video one day i think and i might do a severin one as well because i've also obviously i said i'm going to do um, a Scream Factory one. I've done the box set, so I was going to do the individual releases, but I do fully intend to do a Vinegar Syndrome and a Severin. I haven't got as many of them, so I might do a Vinegar Syndrome and Severin together. But uh, Vinegar Syndrome do some absolutely beautiful, beautiful box sets. Um, and this one, I wanted to get it from their website. Sorry, I, I do, I do apologise. I forgot. I went to get it off the website. It's sold out. So there I am running around like a headless chicken. I wouldn't I wouldn't care. This was not a cheap release. This was expensive. And I found a company over here who had it in stock. So like, bang, I'm having that. And this is, um, I think it's a Swedish, Swedish film. Yeah. And it's called Thriller, A Cruel Picture. It's a double 4K. Hence why it was probably expensive. One of their well-known hard card slip boxes. The Vinegar Syndrome logo there. I'm going to cover that because it's rude. Even though it's only a painting. Mm. 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 The full uncut version is on the first disc. And you get its own slip cover. Again, it's a hard slip cover with the spot glossing on. And it looks absolutely gorgeous, that. Um, the back cover, this film is brutal. Um, this also had the same artwork on the disc, but it had reversible artwork. Which I've later found out, I think that is the um, original Swedish cinema poster and then you get I'm not turning around you get the 4k and you get the blu-ray they did release a standalone version of it but this is long gone this this box set um, and then on the other disc again in its own separate slip you got the trimmed down version which was renamed they call their one eye which I thought was a little bit brutal Pearl has only got a patch on. You find out why she's got a patch on, and it's awful. It's disgusting. You don't find out. You see why she gets the patch. Um. First, I took a speech. Then, as I when they were finished, she used what was left of her own for her own frightening kind of revenge, and it was banned in Sweden. Um, I haven't watched <clears throat> the they call their one eye cut yet, but I will. Again. Blu-ray and 4K. What a set. Uh, and this had reversible artwork as well. Yeah, the other side of it was that. Which is what it came with. So I turned it round to that. So you've got like all these different artworks. It's, it's a beautiful set. Um, it's basically... Whew, how do I start? How can I start and tell you what happens? I think you're better off watching it to be honest. Let's just say, uh, there's a little girl in it at the beginning, and she's picking flowers with um, what you think is looks like a granddad. Um, and then something happens, that's all I'm going to say. 
you jump forward and she's this little girl grown up she is going for an appointment she has to go and see the doctor and mum and dad say you've got to go because like these appointments cost money um, and she goes to the bus stop down the road you see some couple of old wifeys you know chit chatting about hair and what happened and stuff and oh it's such a shame that poor girl and all this lot and um she just misses the bus so she's stuck the bus stop she's looking for the time and she stood around this car pulls up offers her a lift she gets in he takes her for a, a meal and she's very very happy in that goes back to his place and i'm thinking She's got an appointment to be at, and she doesn't question it. And then it changes, just like that. I'll warn you, just in case you're a little bit, um, I won't say prudish, if you don't like adult-related material. In the full uncut version, Thriller, A Cruel Picture, there is some real sex scenes and they're not simulated you see everything you don't see the faces but you see other parts let's shall we say to the best of my knowledge those bits aren't in the they call it one eye cut um i think that's why it sold out because i think it was there was such a hoo-ha when this was released and also this was going to be so limited and it was but what a film for saying it was like made in the 19, early 70s. I think it was 72, something like that. If you get the chance to watch it, watch it. And if you if you get the chance to watch either of them, watch Thriller, A Cruel Picture. That's the full uncut one. Um, it's not just those bits though. There is other violence in it as well that's, that's in it that I don't think in the other one. Um, but yeah, I've had that. Over a year now, and I I loved it, absolutely loved it. What a film! Um, so that's Vinegar Syndrome's um, Thriller, A Cruel Picture. And the last one I watched, um, I've seen this God knows how many times over the years. Um, I absolutely love, love, love this film. All three glorious hours of it. I love the feel of it when it's set late 70s and it's just an amazing amazing Toby Hooper vampire film Salem's Lot that's the steel book but I do have the American um, standard as well somewhere this is the UK steel book I'll take it out and show you um, that is gorgeous that I keep meaning to take the glue off this so that I don't have to keep sort of peeling it back off. But there you go. Right. Show you inside. Unfortunately, it's just a plain boring blue disc like Warner Brothers do. But if you get the standard Blu ray that was on the Warner Brothers label. It's actually a picture disc of that. Um, or was it? No, the DVD was. I don't know about the Blu-ray actually thinking about it. And I'm pretty sure as well, in true Warner Brothers fashion, that that is not a scene from Salem's Lot. That is actually a scene from A Return to Salem's Lot. I'm sure of it. Oh, God, some people want second, don't they? Um, the J card is there and on the back do you know I don't know what's on the back oh that freak this has got to be one of the most terrifying television films ever made for me and I just love it um, when I first heard about this when I was at school and I heard the title Salem's Lot I avoided it because to me it sounded like some sort of stupid treasure hunting in caves adventure film just the title. Weird, isn't it? What your what your mind perceives, and you're totally wrong. 
it's going through the window if this bloody cover doesn't go on um there we do not go oh there we are right yeah salem's lot does that sound like a vampire film no it doesn't does it sound like a horror film no it doesn't salem's lot does it sound like a, a big hoard of treasure in a cave yes it's a lot of treasure belonging to salem that's how i looked at it as a kid so i didn't want to see it and then somebody said no it's a horror film i was like horror film in a cave they're like no it's vampires i was like oh is it now so i didn't actually get to see this until 1985 when it was on the telly so i recorded it and watched it all in one go oh blew me away and the scene where you actually see this jump up for the first time wow i sold my thong david soul is absolutely amazing in this film um I personally don't think it no, needs any introduction whatsoever. I'm assuming everybody's seen this. Well, I haven't said that. Not everybody has. I know people are going to live streams with haven't. So that um, is very, very, very highly recommended. Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot. So that's the films I've watched this last sort of uh, week. Uh, and now... That's not mine. On to these three. What do I think it be? Um, I'll start with that one. This might be the one that I know that I for sure what it is. Oh, I've remembered two. Right. Oh, I forgot about this one. This is the one I forgot about. Um, right. I got this. I've never seen it. And I wanted the American one because the UK one is just a, as usual, bog standard, crappy Amaray case. This is the American one with a lovely slip cover. So I went for this one. Um, and I've got it second hand off eBay to make sure that I got the slip cover. I think it's only been watched once. Um, so you're going to be seeing this the same as me here because I've never seen it before. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Slipcover's beautiful. This is apparently a long lost film from George A. Romero and this is the amusement park. Look at that. It's really raised high that. You can't tell on it. That is gorgeous. It's like it's really got some depth to that. But that that's just a freaky image. Um, I don't think this is actually a long film either. Uh, not rated. 54 minutes, it's less than an hour long. And it's a Shudder exclusive. Um, I should have known. What a bell end. I should have known that the slip cover would have been nice because their slip covers for the creep show telly series are beautiful as well. So let's have a little look inside. You know when I started getting American discs, I hated these um thin covers. I like them better now. I think they're so much nicer than the UK chunkier ones. The obligatory piece of bubble wrap in the middle. Um oh it's a nice picture disc. Well, I say nice, it's got that freak on it again, whoever he is. And uh, this is, it's not a download code. It's just a, uh, a, a cheap, shameless plug to get Shudder. The guy from Martin, who plays Martin's cousin, the older fella, is in this as well. Uh, I don't know what it's about. Recently discovered and restored 46 after its completion, George Romero's The Amusement Park stars Martin's Lincoln, Lincoln Mazel, that's the old fella, as an elderly man who finds himself disoriented and disoriented, disoriented, why did I say disoriented? <laughs> disoriented, 
and increasingly isolated as the pains, tragedies and humiliations of ageing in America are manifested through roller coasters and chaotic crowds. Different. Loves me some George A. Romero, so I'm looking forward to watching that. That's the amusement park. Uh, the next one. Ooh, this feels big. Giggity! Giggity! Oh, dropped in card as well, that's why. Give it a wee snip. And this is, <laughs> look at this, brand new, still sealed, 4K, with a slip cover, 8 quid, Home Alone, the original. Pretty good, huh? Uh, oh, and it's embossed and spot glossed. Nice. Even the 4K Ultra UHDs embossed at the top there. Uh, wow, amazing. I thought the slipcover might have been a little bit tatty, but not. Bang on. It's got a little piece of tape. There. Is it tape? Yeah. We'll be off that cardboard, the idiot. Yeah, it's off. There we go. No damage. However, the piece of tapes fell in love with my thumb. Get off. Should we open a TV to picture this? Yeah. Um. Oh. Let's be careful with this. So. Oh. Nice. You do get the Blu-ray as well, and they are both picture discs. Oh, very nice. I know it's not Christmas, but I may watch this later. 4K Blu-ray. I've only got this on DVD. I've got the, the box set of all four of them. And we, we know how great 3 and 4 are. Um, if Home Alone 2 is, because I don't know, but if that's on 4K or it comes out, I'll get that as well, because the first two are Definitely the, the, the ones to have for me. Joe Pesci. I could not accept this for a while after seeing him in Goodfellas. Weird. Over the moon with that. God, what a bargain. Home Alone. Brand new sealed with a slip. Eight quid. Uh, and the last one. I think I know what this is. And if it's not what I think it is, then God knows what it is. It is... Oh! It's not what I thought it was. I got another 4K with a slip. Cheap. Um... Oh, get in. I can watch this now. Um, yeah. I, I didn't expect this one yet because this one's come from America. This is the unrated region-free Blu-ray. 84 minutes. Not the crappy UK one. Version. Probably the same running time, but I don't care. Of Terrifier, the first one. I hated this when I watched it. Because the acting was that bad. However, he scares the bejesus out of me. Look at that face. And it's that face why I wanted to like this film so much. Now, I've watched so many films where I've watched them once... I thought they were crap. Watched them again and loved them. So I'm now going to watch this with the expectations of being crap and knowing that the acting is crap so that I might enjoy it. I've got no right to dislike this when I watch all that video nasty crap is the way I look at it. Terrifier 2 is on its way. Um, and that was the reason I wanted this. I also want... All Hallows Eve, which is where At the Clown first made his debut. I've never seen that either. 
I might watch this one tonight, to be honest. Am I going anywhere tonight? Am I doing anything tonight? Can I remember my own name half the time? I don't know. But if I'm in, I have these three belters to pick from. So, let's have a little look there. This used to be so expensive. It's not dirt cheap now, but I'd much rather have the separate releases than that awful, awful UK double disc dead bloody duo or whatever you call it. No slip cover, nothing. I know this doesn't have a slip. Um, I don't know if it ever did. Uh, if anybody from the States is watching, can you let me know? Did this ever have a slip cover? Because um, if it did, I'll try and hunt it down. Um, so let's have a look what you get. It's a shame this didn't have a 4K release, but I'm pretty sure that in the States, this might be getting one. Could be wrong, don't know, but we'll see. Two discs. Ah, two discs. Blu-ray and DVD. That says it old, and, and wow, reversible artwork, which I didn't know because I've only ever seen it like that. Let's have a look. Oh, that is beautiful. That is nice. Can I show you that? You're not seeing anything, it's covered up with chains, but I'll just do that. And I know it's only a painting, but look at that artwork. I've never seen that before. I think I might be swapping that round. Can't make my mind up. I'll leave it like that for now. I'll have a think. And when I've watched this for the second time, I will review it and let you know what I think. Um, because everybody loves these Terrifier films. And before I'd even seen them, as soon as I saw Art the Clown, it was one of them I have got to see that film. And I was so disappointed because of all the hype it got. Um, I really want to like it. But you, obviously you can't force yourself to like something. But I thought, seems I am getting the second one at some point. I need to get this so I've got them both. And so I can watch this again. I just can't remember much about it. I remember being in the cafe. Oh, creep. What a creep. Um, and I, I do remember the violence being very excessive. And apparently the second one is a million times worse. We'll see. So there we go, that's the three that I've just had delivered, unboxed, and they all look fantastic, do they not? The Amusement Park, Home Alone, and the original Terrifier. So there you go, that's it. That's what I've watched the last week, and the three titles I've just had delivered by... Stop, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Postman, today. Um, If you've seen anything that I've watched... Or any of those three that I've just received. Which you must have seen Home Alone and Terrifier. Let me know what you thought. Um, let me know what you thought of the ones I've watched. Did you did you like them? Am I talking out of my anus and they're a load of crap? Let me know. Um, either way, thank you from the bottom of my heart so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, and if you have subbed, I absolutely love you to bits. Thank you so much. I can't tell you what it means. Um, but it's enough that you just watch me sit and waffle on. Listen to this boring fat going on about crap he's got and he's watching. Not that anybody cares. But thank you for watching. <laughs> we have to appreciate it. Uh, I will be seeing some of you on tomorrow night's stream with Scott. Uh, and Pete. Love them a bit. And Josh. Um, and we've got... <laughs> we've got Jamie on if you've never seen Jamie you are in for an experience god he's funny and he's got the, 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 the biggest adorable dozy ass smile I've ever seen in my life well, I had a blast with him last night what a fella so I look forward to that tomorrow night I hope some of you can uh, come and watch as well and ask us some nice normal questions Um, yeah if I don't see you on the stream tomorrow night, I'll see you on the next video, which will not be too long. Um, and once again, 
thank you so much for watching all two of you i really do appreciate it and thank you so much for subscribing and continuing to watch my stuff and i really do appreciate all the support you're all amazing thank you very much take care of yourselves and then take care of each other and i will see you very very soon thank you so much Ta -ta.